Usually, when archaeologists go searching for treasures from Earth's distant past, the things they find are consistent with what they were looking for. Nobody's surprised when a team of archaeologists goes digging in Egypt and finds a mummy in a tomb, for example. There are occasions when the unexpected happens, though, and experts come across things that appear to be from the wrong time or the wrong place and defy all attempts to explain them. This is a collection of those strange, mysterious archaeological finds. We know a lot less about the ancient Thracian society than we'd like to. They left very few records of their own, and so the bulk of what we know of them comes from the records of the ancient Romans and Greeks. We have a lot of second-hand knowledge, but very little first-hand knowledge. They disappeared somewhere between the 3rd and 7th century, but many modern Bulgarians can trace their ancient roots back to the Thracians. That's why it isn't a surprise that this beautiful golden amphora and set of vials turned up in Bulgaria in 2017. That being said, we're at a loss to explain why the decorations engraved onto these delicate golden objects appear to be covered in African faces. The incredible artifacts are thought to have been made for and used by King Suthis III, who lived around 2400 years ago. He and his people shouldn't have had any knowledge of the African continent back then, and yet the African influence on these pieces is there for everyone to see. How is this possible? Looking at this beautiful sword, can you believe that it comes from the middle of the 16th century? Finding Ottoman blades in and around Turkey isn't necessarily a surprise, but they're almost never in such perfect condition as this one is. The long, curved, single-edged blade is decorated with Arabic inscriptions from the Quran, running in a double row down the edge of the blade. Despite the fact that 500 years have passed since the sword was made, all of them are still clearly legible. Finding verses in praise of Allah is to be expected on a blade that belonged to an Arabic warrior, but this sword is unusual. The inscriptions praise not only Allah, but also his powerful wise servant, Solomon of Israel. It's almost certain that this was a reference to the famous Ottoman Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent, who ruled from 1520 to 1566. As the blade is so unique, we can't rule out the possibility that this may even have been the Sultan's personal sword. If you came across this brooch on the ground and picked it up, you might not think much of it. Even the first team of experts who assessed it weren't convinced of its value. From a brief visual inspection, they thought it was probably from the Victorian era in Great Britain, which would have made it a little over a century old. Only when they paid a little more attention did they realize that they'd stumbled across something far older and far more value. This is no Victorian brooch. It's a piece of Anglo-Saxon jewelry, and it's at least 1,100 years. It might even be older than that. The brooch is so well preserved that the tiny carvings of animals and plants that decorate its face are still easy to see, and the original clasp that is still attached to its back. If you wanted to, you could pin this to your clothes and wear it today. The style of art that appears on the front of the brooch is known as Truhiddle, and the piece, found in 2019, has become one of the best examples of it discovered so far. The only thing that experts can agree upon about this next item is that it is a helmet, and that it is probably from the 6th or 5th century BCE. Beyond that, Everything is educated guesswork. The Harvard Art Museum, which currently holds the piece, says that it's styled on a boarhead. That puts the institution at odds with many other experts who think it's more likely to have been styled after the head of a wolf. It's most likely Etruscan in origin, but that too is an educated guess rather than a statement of fact. Whatever animal it's supposed to represent, it appears to have had a rough life. The material is dented, broken, and contains patched up sections that suggest numerous ancient repairs were carried out. We expect to see repair work on ancient battle helmets, but most scholars feel that this was unlikely to be a headgear that was used in battle. 
it would have been impractical for the purpose and so it was more likely to have a ritual use. What that ritual might have been, we can only guess at. When you're asked to think of a king or a queen, the first person you're likely to think about is the Queen of England. We still have monarchies in some modern age countries, but monarchies are actually an ancient tradition, one of the oldest systems of governance in the world. To illustrate that point, here's a crown that was found in a Dead Sea cave in 1961. A crown that's 6,000 years old. The cave close to the Judean desert was found to be full of Copper Age treasures when it was first discovered. But this crown is the pride of the whole collection. Rather than being decked out in jewels like a modern crown would be, it's a thicker copper band topped off with carvings of vultures and, for some reason, doorways. The true origin of the crown and the whole collection of artifacts that came with it is unknown, and some archaeologists believe that the crown might not even have belonged to a king or queen. Instead, they feel that they may have been used as part of a burial ceremony for very important people, although the evidence to support that assertion is flimsy. We have no idea whether this next mysterious find is part of a gruesome torture punishment or if it's merely an elaborate prank. Found in the medieval crime museum in the Germany city of Rothenburg, we're told that this piece is a scold's bridle and it was used to punish people who've been caught lying or gossiping. Allegedly, the heavy metal masks were used during the 16th century across Germany and much of the rest of Europe, including Britain. From studying the device, we can see that once it was secured in place, the mouth attachment would push back the wearer's tongue, preventing them from speaking and also causing them a great deal of pain. Some British records suggest that it wasn't just liars and gossipers who had to worry about being trapped inside one of these. Bad musicians or dishonest tradesmen were also likely to be punished the same way. Some of the British records may have been forged by the Victorians who were prone to exaggeration and fabrication. But there's no doubt that the devices themselves were real. The oldest known battlefield in Europe is also in Germany, close to the site of the Teulens River. From artifacts that have been found there, we can say for sure that the conflict happened about 3,300 years ago, but we don't know who was fighting or what they were fighting about. Not only that, but we also don't fully understand some of the objects that may have been plucked from the battlefield. A collection of 31 bronze items was retrieved from the riverbed in 2019, including a knife, a chisel, and what appears to be a small bronze belt buckle. Very close to the collection was a human skeleton, suggesting that this may have been a battlefield burial site for the owner of the goods. The three bronze cylinders found with the collection are a particular puzzle. They were probably used to hold personal items in the same way a purse or wallet would today, but items of this style from this era have only been found in the east of France before. That suggests a grander scale to the battle. Instead of being two rival Bronze Age German tribes, this might have been a battle between armies from ancient France and ancient Germany. The pages of Norse mythology speak of a terrifying female figure known as Volva, a seer and a shaman, so powerful that even the gods were wary of her. Did such people really exist? Or are they just fairy tales? Thanks to the discovery of an ancient grave in Denmark, it appears that the tale of Volva women may have its roots in reality. The body in the tomb was the first clue. Her blue and gold clothes lined with gold were consistent with ancient descriptions and indicated high status. The second clue was that she was buried with silver toe rings that weren't Danish in origin and bronze bowls thought to be from Asia. This was someone of both wealth and power. This decorative box brooch was probably from Gotland and at some point been filled with white lead. 2,000 years ago, white lead was used as both a medicine and a poison. The long metal wand might be the biggest clue of all, though, 
The word vova translates from Old Norse as wand carrier, and this ancient staff with its bronze fittings is consistent with that description. She may not have had any supernatural powers, but the people who lived around her probably believed she did, and that was enough for them to treat her with respect. In October 2019, archaeologists working inside an ancient tomb in the Henan province of China found an ornate 2,000-year-old bronze pot. It would have have been a valuable finding even if it had been empty, but the yellow fluid inside it made it truly unique. The liquid made up of potassium nitrate and alunite is thought to be a fabled elixir of life, described in many ancient Taoist texts, but never seen before until now. Legends say that whoever drinks the elixir will live forever. It didn't appear to have done much good for the ancient unknown aristocrat who was buried with it though. And that's not surprising. If anyone did ever drink it, it would probably make them blind and also cause their kidneys to fail. Because the texts are ambiguous, we can't say for sure whether its authors truly believed that people could achieve immortality through consuming the potion, or if it was intended as a symbolic offering to ensure that the entombed person would enjoy a long and prosperous afterlife. We suspect it was the latter, but we're not going to drink it to find out. Some archaeologists go their whole lives without making a significant discovery. So it must irritate them when an archaeology student finds something fantastic right at the beginning of their careers. Nevertheless, it was a student who rediscovered this 5,000-year-old sword, which had been mislabeled in a monastery in Venice, Italy. According to the monastery, it was a 700-year-old medieval weapon but its actual origins go back much further and are far more mysterious. The student's research, however, proved that the sword was found at the site of Kavak in Turkey and used to belong to Armenian art collector Yervent Khorasanjian. Furthermore, chemical analysis showed it to be made of copper and arsenic alloy, a combination used in the era before humans started bending bronze and tin to make swords instead. The style is similar to swords known to have been made three to four thousand years ago. But this one goes back even further. It might even be the oldest sword ever discovered. And it's been misunderstood all this time. The name of the Edwin Smith Papyrus is misleading. Edwin Smith obviously isn't an ancient name but the document was named for the person who discovered it in 1862, not the person who wrote it. This remarkably well-preserved document is actually more like 3,600 years old and as such is the oldest known guide to medical surgery ever found. It contains descriptions and suggested treatments for almost 50 different fractures and breakages, as well as excision guides for tumors and growths. What makes it astonishing for its time is that the advice given focuses on practical and scientific treatments for medical problems, as opposed to the potions and magic that were commonly used by the doctors of the time. There are a few magic spells on the reverse of the document, but the placement suggests that they were only used as a last resort when all surgical methods had failed to save the patient. Oddly, the document ends mid-sentence, as if the author was suddenly forced to stop writing. We will probably never know who that author was or why they were abruptly pulled away from their valuable work. We don't know much about the Hongshan culture other than the fact that they were Neolithic people who lived in the basin of the Liao River around 6,000 years ago, and they were skilled artists and sculptors. Very few records of their existence have survived to the modern age, but we do have their strange statues to remember them by. The sculptures, mostly made from jade, are well known by alien conspiracy theorists. We understand why. From sight alone, they look exactly like the stereotypical depictions of the aliens you see in many science fiction stories. All of the figurines are roughly humanoid, but none of them seem even remotely human nor do they resemble the styles of statues made by other culture in and around China, or anywhere else in the world. 
Some experts have tried to insist that they represent a mythical dragon-pig hybrid creature. But do these carvings look like pigs or dragons to you? The most likely explanation is that the Hogshan people saw something that no other human eyes have seen before or since. But what that something might have been is unknown. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon.